Hello, this is Jeff O'Rear from the Judson Road Church of Christ in Longview, Texas. Thank you for joining us for another one of our YouTube videos. It's going to be published on September 15, 2021. Today we are continuing our series of videos that talk about different songs from our hymnals and taking some devotional thoughts from them. Today our song is going to be Take the Name of Jesus With You. In our Hymns for Worship book, that's number 430. If you have a hymnal, feel free to turn along at home and look at these words as we'll talk about some of them for our thoughts for today, or simply just listen and follow along. Most importantly, I would like you to have a Bible with you, because we'll be looking to God's Word to really see the things that we can find from these songs that translate the thoughts of God's Word and things we can use in our life as we look to take the name of Jesus with us. This song is a song that I think will encourage us to make sure that as we go throughout our week, it's a tune that may be stuck with us and may be coming through our minds and we may find ourselves humming. Hopefully as we hum that tune and as we think about that song, we'll think about some of the words in here and understand or ponder the thought, what does it mean to take the name of Jesus with you everywhere you go? Let's consider this song, verse 1 of Take the Name of Jesus With You. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where'er you go. We are immediately identifying ourselves as we sing this song of children of sorrow and woe. We all face sorrow and woe and trials and sufferings in this life. Some things that we'll see a regular idea in the life of a Christian. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are going to be some dark days, some difficult days. I'm always mindful, as what preachers have told me before, to help me remember the fact that as I am proclaiming God's Word, as I am standing in a pulpit, as I'm looking at a camera right now recording a YouTube video, the people who hear this message, I hope are people who generally have a good outlook on life, but are people who are experiencing life. And that means might be people who are facing problems in their marriages who are struggling with raising their children and have children who may be wandering from the faith, people who are struggling with loss or addiction or sin. We all have sorrows and woes in this life. What's something we can find to help us with those sorrows and woes? Something in those moments of sorrow and woe, we see the Apostle Paul talk about the fact that it can be the name of Jesus and Jesus himself with us. I'm in Philippians chapter 4 right now. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 starting there. Paul says, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Here Paul is talking about the idea that he can find comfort. He has the secret, he says there in verse 12, of how to face life in any circumstance. And we might have particularly think about some of those woeful circumstances for Paul. We could turn to somewhere like 2 Corinthians chapter 11, or even understanding the context of the Philippian letter. Paul's in prison right now. But throughout this letter, in chapter 1, Paul's talking about Jesus. Chapter 2, Paul's talking about Jesus. Chapter 3, Paul's talking about Jesus. And chapter 4, he's talking about Jesus. He talks about rejoicing in the Lord always. Here's the secret. I'm getting so worked up, books are falling off the shelves of her out of screen. Here's the secret. Chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through him or through Christ who strengthens me. It is the name and the presence and the authority of Jesus that helps Paul in those times of sorrow and woe to find that joy and comfort. And it's the same name of Jesus as we experience those trials and sorrows that will help us to find joy and comfort as we go through this life. Verse 2 of our song. Take the name of Jesus ever as a shield every, from every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. We won't just face sorrows and trials and sufferings and woes in this life. Either some of those will come in the form of temptation or we will just experience temptation from those who are false teachers, from Satan's agents, but most importantly, understanding from Satan himself. He is the real enemy that we need to be on guard against and aware of. So one thing we can do to make sure we are able to stand against the temptations of Satan is to respond as Jesus would have responded to Satan's temptations. As we have record in Luke and Matthew, 
and particularly in those places where we see Jesus responding to the temptations of Jesus there, saying, it is written. We take the word of God and use God's word to help stand against temptations that Satan throws at us, those snares he's trying to trap us in to cause us to lose our salvation, to cause us to wander away from the Lord. But also it can be by providing ourselves, or not really providing ourselves, but as God provides his armor to us, taking that armor and equipping ourselves, and then using the power of prayer to overcome those temptations, understanding the power and authority of Jesus that is behind those prayers. I'm in Ephesians chapter 6, just a few pages back from Philippians chapter 4 now. Ephesians chapter 6, let's start in verse 14. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pay particular attention here to verse 18 as we think about the thoughts from our song. The second part of verse 2, If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Ephesians 6 verse 18, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. I pray for you, anyone who is watching right now, I'm praying for you that you would not be overcome by temptations or the snares of the devil, but that you would withstand those temptations. Pray in the name of Jesus that that would happen and be the situation for your life, that you would overcome those temptations. That's the goal, that we would not be drawn in and broken down by those temptations. We overcome those temptations. And as we are equipped with the armor of God, and as we pray for God's strength and for his grace, and for the, his help, we see here, when all pray, praying at all times, Paul talks about that we would overcome these temptations and snares of the devil. Use God's word, use the power of prayer to overcome these temptations, particularly as we do so in the name of Jesus. Let's consider then the third verse of our song. Verse 3 in the chorus of Take the Name of Jesus with You. Oh, the precious name of Jesus! How it thrills our souls with joy when his loving, arm, his loving arms receive us and his songs our tongues employ. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. The name of Jesus is such an amazing thing. It is precious, as he talks about in here. It is powerful. It is worthy to be praised. Over in Acts chapter 3, I want to begin with some thoughts from there related to this third verse as we're wrapping up this video. In our songbooks, especially in the Hymns for Worship songbooks, underneath the title of our songs, we'll see maybe a verse that's provided that will help us to gather some ideas relating to this song. This song is giving in reference to Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. There is none other, none other name under heaven given among men who whereby we must be saved. I'm not as eloquent with the King James or ASV. I think that might be quoting there. But you get the idea that they're talking about a situation in Acts chapter 4. Let's see where that comes from. Let's start in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 8. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man, lame from birth, was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the Beautiful Gate, to ask for alms of those who were entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Jesus of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk, enter the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Here's a man who never in his life has done this. He's never walked. 
He's never leaped. He's never cartwheeled. He's never done that little thing some people can do where they kick up in the air and tip their heels. He's never done any of that. But through the power and name and authority of Jesus, this man has been healed. And so you can imagine just the, the excitement this would bring. Here people are walking to the temple as they would be expected, maybe going to a place to worship or to bring sacrifices. People are going to notice this. Remember, this guy's been here every day at the place called the Beautiful Gate. And anybody who's walked by, they probably recognize this same guy over all the years he's been there. And now they see him, and he's not lying on the ground anymore. He's walking around and praising God, praising the name of Jesus. Pick up in verse 9 of Acts chapter 3. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the Beautiful Gate of the temple asking for alms. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our power or piety we made him walk? Peter sees all the people gathering around, and he sees as an opportunity not just to brag and say, Do you see this guy who's now well? He sees his opportunity to preach Jesus. He talks about Jesus Christ, the servant of God. And particularly, note verse 16 of Acts chapter 3. And his name, in the name of Jesus, by faith in Jesus' name, has made this man strong, by whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. The name of Jesus helped this man. So, so Peter and John are going to preach how salvation comes through Jesus. Now, we know how the Jews feel about Jesus based on how the fact that they killed him. And we would know that people who have seen the resurrected Jesus, people who believe in the resurrected Jesus, are those who have their lives changed, filled with joy and hope, understanding that he is the source of salvation. But not everybody sees Jesus that way. As these men are declaring these things in the temple, the priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, are coming up and they're upset about all this and they arrest them. But let's pick up in Acts chapter 4 now, verse 11. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders which became the cornerstone. It's a quotation from Psalm 118, verse 22. Peter goes on in verse 12, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus brings us joy. It's that precious name to us it's so sweet because it truly is the hope of earth and joy of heaven. It's hope for anyone here on this earth that's where we're going to find salvation from our sins. It's the joy with which people are praising in the name of His name in heaven now. As we read in places like Revelation, they're praising to the Lamb. They're giving honor to and glory to Jesus for Him being this source of salvation for all mankind. And we see as these men are going to continue to be threatened by the Pharisees for what they're doing and by this court of people. They're saying, okay, we can't really deny what you're doing in the name of Jesus, but would you just calm down with all that Jesus stuff? In verse 19 and verse 20, Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. We cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Can we summarize that to say we cannot speak but anything besides the name of Jesus. I think that's the attitude we are trying to be taking away from this song as we sing this song from time to time. Hopefully as you sing this song through the rest of this week, on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, as you take the name of Jesus with you to every place you go, your work, your school, your job, as you go out to eat, as you go to the store, as you're driving in traffic, take the name of Jesus with you and be reminded of the joy the preciousness, the salvation that comes through his name. Let's have a word of prayer before we close today. Our wonderful, awesome Heavenly Father, who sits on the throne, surrounded by the heavenly court, who worships and honors you, who sings praises to your Son, our Lord and Savior, the sacrificial Lamb, Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for the opportunity to study your word and to take thoughts from your word, we're grateful for songs that keep our minds and hearts focused on your word and the way that songs can help us to meditate upon truths of your word. We pray that we would take the name of Jesus with us as we face sorrows and trials in this life. Whatever circumstance we see the secret from Paul to find contentment 
in the name of Jesus, understanding that it's through him that we live and we have our being and that we are able to endure this life. As we face temptations, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that we would be protected for those temptations, that we would overcome those temptations. We pray that not just for ourselves, but for all saints, for all people, that they would see the name of Jesus and the power of Jesus to overcome that temptation and sin. And Father, may we just dwell and reflect and meditate upon the sweet, precious, holy name of Jesus, who truly is the hope of earth and joy of heaven. May we see how sweet that name is and understand his authority, his presence, and the power in our lives. May we look to, to reflect that as we interact with others, that they would see the power and the sweet, precious name of Jesus through all that we do to reflect his image. We ask that you will continue to be with those who are struggling right now. We're mindful of those who are still fighting the coronavirus. We want to make mention for them and for their health, for those who are helping them and, and putting their own health and, and lives at risk or their service of others, the doctors and nurses and others who take care and serve others, that you would be with them and protect them. We pray that you'd be with those who have not yet accepted salvation through the name of Jesus Christ, that they would come to have their hearts softened and to see the power of your word, to see their need for Jesus. And Father, we pray that we would all grow and mature in the name of Jesus Christ, being bearing fruit for him and your kingdom. We pray that you would continue to bless us in all that we do. May we take the name of Jesus with us. It's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for tuning in to this video today. We will continue to be meeting on Sunday mornings only at 1030 for our worship service, at least through this upcoming Sunday's service. We've that's August 19th, 19th or so, something like that. Again, I don't have my calendar with me. Whatever the Sunday after this video releases is, that's our next assembly. It'll be at 1030. You can always join us in person. Our elders are still asking if people would be wearing masks or social, and social distance if you do join us in person. But feel free to tune into our live streams as well. It's anything we can do to help you as far as either with especially spiritual matters, questions about the Bible, questions about salvation, about Jesus Christ, we would love to help you with that. You can reach out to us on our Facebook page. You can find us on our website at judsonroad.church. That's road spelled Judson, R-O-A-D, dot church. We'd love to reach out with you to open God's Word, to talk about your questions, and hopefully find the answers and to see the answers that are provided within the Word of God. Until then, may God bless you. May you love God's family and love your neighbor. Most importantly, love the Lord. And may you take the name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give. Jesus said.